Um, so today I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about some recent things we've done around the idea of SP network designs um, and efforts that we put into kind of looking at, at different parts of the network and trying to come up with kind of prescriptive designs to fit those parts of the network. And it's not like this is something Cisco's doing like right off the bat that we've never done this. We've done this a number of times. Uh, but it's really taking a look at some of the more kind of modern technologies and aspects and the hardware that we're using today to focus on these specific kind of different areas of the network. Um, and these are the three that we've, you know, focused on thus far. So, you know, it's kind of a journey. Um, there's more that we'll add later. We'll refine these. But over the last year, these are the three that we focused on. It's really, really around uh, kind of metro and access. Um, and when you think about that, it's kind of traditional kind of business VPN. Uh, like backhaul services, you know, there's a lot of talk about 5G today, so really that's a big focus area for us, is how we build scalable access networks. Um, core, core is a part of just about every service provider network. Um, it's really the, the transit point that interconnects all the different, you know, disparate geographic areas of the network. Um, and then another thing that, that, you know, something that I've, you know, keyed on is, is peering. Um, and that's really internet peering, and, and today peering really covers more than just traditional kind of IXP, BGP sessions. It's really content delivery. Uh, I think Kevin touched upon a lot of that earlier with the rise in video traffic. It's really, you know, content delivery is really what we mean uh, by peering in general today. Um, and then, you know, the design of these, um, you know, everything is called a fabric. Uh, fabric is a bit of a marketing term, and I'll, it kind of means a little bit of different things to different people. And I'll touch upon kind of what we mean by fabric in the context of these designs. Um, so really, you know, metro core and peering, we try to keep the, the naming pretty simple and not too, uh, too markety. Uh, and as far as the building blocks, and, and I'll touch upon, you know, some more of kind of the priorities and principles we used. Uh, but really, we're looking at, you know, kind of modern scale-out designs. Um, it doesn't always mean everything's a clo fabric or some kind of huge horizontally scaled fabric. You know, it can fit many different kind of uh, paradigms and, and, you know, sizes of the network. Um, you heard, you know, Jose talk a lot about segment routing. Uh, segment routing is really the basis for a lot of the things we're doing today, uh, both mainly on the transport side, but also on the service side, and then EVPN. Um, EVPN is a technology that probably should have existed 10 years ago. Uh, we went through the evolution of VPLS and things like that, which weren't great. Now we're at EVPN, and we're kind of, that's really the modern way that we're looking at delivering uh, Layer 2 services. Um, and then automation and security are uh, a part of all of these. Um, you know, I think that's kind of table stakes today with the size of networks that we're talking about, uh, the number of nodes being deployed, and especially if we're talking about uh, moving to more kind of scale-out designs, you really need to have ways to automate kind of the deployment and operation of those networks uh, to make it really work. Um, and then Dan talked a lot about security. Security is always there. Um, I think sometimes the vendors, you know, we don't put as much emphasis, but you know, we're definitely trying to do that with these designs today. Um, and just to build upon a lot of those things, you know, as far as design principles, like what are the things that we, we look at when we look at all these different designs? Um, you know, best of breed, uh, that's where the Cisco kind of hardware <laughs> angle comes into this, is we feel like we have the best hardware that fits these different positions in the network from both, you know, scale, density, feature set perspective, and things like that. Uh, simplification, I think you heard Kevin talk about that as well, as well as Jose. Uh, the real key to operating these kind of networks and at the scale that we're looking at is simplifying things. Um, it's really, you know, kind of decomposing networks into simpler building blocks and simpler functions as opposed to combining lots of complexity into like a single box uh, that's prone to take out, you know, kind of you know, widespread failures happen in those ways when you do that. Um, really increasing the resiliency of the network uh, without adding complexity, without stacking additional control plane uh, protocols onto the network. Um, reducing those control plane protocols. Um, obviously, you guys heard the SR story. That's a big part of the SR story. Um, a big part of it also is open automation, and what we mean by open. And you heard, you know, Mike and Santiago talk a lot about that. Is you know, we support automation, but we want to use open standards. Um, we want to support open models through things like Open Config. Uh, we want to support industry standard, you know, standard telemetry, uh, you know, streaming and coding, uh, things like that. Uh, today, a lot of our models are, you know, what we call native models in the industry. So they're kind of Cisco-specific uh, Yang models. But those are all published. You know, the vendors are very good at publishing models online to GitHub. So it's not like anybody can't see them and use them and consume those. Um, obviously, security is a big part of the designs. Um, and really, through this kind of holistic, you know, uh, you know, designs that we're doing, we really want to put forth best practices for how you secure the network. 
Um, we want to say, you know, give people, a kind of, you know, for peering examples, you know, uh, you know, what kind of ACLs should you deploy? What kind of other things should you do to you know, protect your control plane? Um, those are the types of things that we're trying to, to build into all these designs. Um, and then validation. So validation is an important part of these things. Um, obviously, we validate all these individual features. We have you know, large labs that do regression testing. Uh, but we, really, if we're building a design, uh, we want to validate every part of that design. It's not just the control plane. It's not just to make sure ISIS works between two nodes. Uh, it's also to validate all of the automation. Uh, a lot of the automation stuff is fairly new, whereas streaming telemetry or event-driven telemetry. Um, so we want to make sure that we're evaluating all of that, as well as any other kind of automation we're building as part of that design to help uh, you know, someone operate the network in an easier way. Um, here's sort of like the, what the fabric means to us. So like I said, fabric is a term like SDN. It means a different thing to every diff different people you talk to. Um, really, simplification is the key. Well, we kind of beat that over, you know, over the head. But it it's really is key to operating these networks. Uh, we have mobile networks today that are approaching 200,000 nodes. Um, and in the next five years, those will be a million nodes. Um, so you really have to find a way to build a kind of an any to any scalable fabric. Um, where I can really provision services at any, any point in that network. Uh, you heard so Jose talk a bit about constraint-based services. And to me, that's inherent in the fabrics that we build, um, is the ability to you know, have an end-to-end -end service that's, that you can you know, specify a latency constraint. You can specify you know, potentially a, some sort of different metric. Um, a good example that he gave was you know, making sure you have a, a MACSEC encrypted path end-to-end. Uh, that you need to take. That's something that we've heard from a few different customers. Uh, the other thing is resiliency. A fabric is meant to be resilient. Um, you should be able to lose any node in that fabric uh, and route around it. You know, a lot of that comes into you know, specific topology decisions, the, the way you build things. Um, yeah, I should be able to insert a node. I should be able to remove a node and have very little impact to that overall topology. And yeah, this is the, sort of the simplification story. I think we've heard a lot about this today already. Uh, transport simplification is really segment routing. It's about eliminating protocols from the network uh, while not adding, you know, while adding features to the network. So that's the key to segment routing is, you know, I'm not really losing anything. I'm actually gaining functionality, and I'm reducing protocols on the network itself. Uh, and then service simplification through eVPN. Um, so I am getting rid of other protocols like LDP-based signaling, BGP-based. Uh, signal VPLS and things like that. I'm replacing all kind of layer two services um, with eVPN. Uh, and then I'm still using layer three VPN for what we'll say layer three service delivery. Uh, the one question I didn't hear about layer two, about eVPN is, is, is eVPN going to replace layer three VPN at some point? Are we going to do everything with eVPN? And the Cisco stance is no. Uh, we'll continue, layer three VPN is very good at what layer three VPN has been doing for the last you know, 12 or so years. It'll continue to be that. Um, you guys have seen this slide before, because I think Jiri, if you guys are here for Jiri's presentation, he showed, he showed this slide. And it's really kind of the, the simplification journey over time of, of how we evolved from all these different control plane protocols in the past uh, to support either inter-domain control planes using you know, unified MPLS or seamless MPLS and BGP labeled unicast. Um, and then if we want to support things like fast reroute on top of that, you know, that required I use something R, like RSBTE was always the answer to that. Um, and today we can do all of those different things uh, simply with IGP, with IGP based segment routing. You know, it takes care of all of those different, uh, different functions by itself. Um, we talk about programmable transport. Uh, that was really kind of, you know, what Jose was getting at is now I can, you know, I have, you know, not to use a, another buzzword, intent based, you know, programmable paths across the network on a per service basis or even a per traffic flow basis in the future. And I'll go into some detail about how we use you know, segment routing to do that, and specifically like PCEs to do that, path computation elements, is to be a centralized control point for those paths across the network. And yeah, what do we talk about when we talk about automation and specifically? Um, so with these designs that, that we've created, you know, we have kind of a similar building blocks for automation. Like I said, it is standard interfaces uh, that we're using, standard models that we're using to get data in and out of the network. Uh, the one thing we really wanted to do with telemetry, and obviously the last two talks were about telemetry, um, is be prescriptive about you know, what people should be monitoring in these designs and how they monitor it. Um, you know, Model-driven telemetry is a great thing, but not everybody, you know, if I deploy this specific eVPN service, like, 
what streaming telemetry is helpful to me to operate my network and to monitor the network. Um, you know, searching through a Yang model to find the specific paths is pretty difficult. Um, so really, it's a, a matter of you know, uh, giving providers what they need to, to better monitor those networks out of the box. Um, and a lot of the things that we've done with, with these specific de designs, as far as things like service automation and uh, migration assistance, are using NSO. And I know we haven't talked really about NSO. NSO is you know, Network Services Orchestrator. Um, came from tail off some years ago. Uh, but it's really kind of a foundational element to a lot of the, the service provider automation that we do. Um, and it creates kind of a simple you know, vendor agnostic uh, you know, interface between these model-driven configurations uh, and the actual network itself. So what we've done is we've you know, bundled NSO automation with these designs um, and made them available to at least people get started on how I can automate, uh, automate those networks. Now we see the validation part I mentioned is all the automation that we're looking at is validated along with all of the other kind of XR features and all the lower level uh, things that we're doing. Um, we wanted to make sure the telemetry works the way we're saying it's going to work and that the other types of uh, service automation work uh, as well. Um, and you guys have heard a bit about data models today and really kind of data models are kind of the, the foundation of, of you know, what we're doing with automation. Um, and the key point is really the top one there, that providing a structured, software-friendly representation of both config and state data. Um, and many times through the same model, I can represent both config and state data. You know, so my configuration basically matches the, the operational data that I'm getting you know, from the device through the same model. Um, in some cases, there are different config models from, from I guess, operational state models, uh, but they're easy to, to compare those models versus before you know, where you know, an SNMP string really has sometimes very little to do with the actual configuration of the device. Uh, and trying to correlate those two things together is pretty difficult. The model-driven way makes that a, a much easier thing to do.